Once again, very good day to everybody. This is uh, Electromagnetic Fields and Wave Guides. And in today's class, we will discuss about wave phenomena at the interface between two media. Especially, we will discuss about Snell's law. Okay, Snell's law, the reflection and transmission coefficient, and about Brewster's coefficient. Okay, so that we will be discussing about the normal and parallel polarization. So, this is especially for you, my dear students and young researchers. And you can reach me at dr.chrisranan at the rate of gmail.com. So before beginning the session, once again let me thank God for giving me this opportunity to deliver this useful session to share my knowledge among my fellow national, international participants, students and young researchers. So in this class, we will discuss about Snell's law, about the speed of the light and index of the refraction. Then we discuss light as a wave. We discuss we analyze the velocity change then about refraction critical angle and total internal reflection in the interface okay then we'll discuss about step index fibers and graded mode fibers we'll study about step index as well as graded mode fibers okay so then we'll discuss about the reflection coefficient and transmission coefficient okay then we discuss about brewster's angle Brewster's coefficient, Brewster's angle we will be discussing and we will understand Brewster's angle as a function of the ratio of the refractive indices. Okay. Then we will discuss about the polarizing angle, normal parallel polarization, the technical explo uh, exploitation of the Brewster's angle and the reflection losses for the symmetric path. Okay. So at uh, regular intervals I will be giving you some short videos to discuss the knowledge in our topics and I have already given the independent work for you in Hemis. Please complete them as soon as possible. Okay, right. So this is Snell's law or you can also call it as the law of refraction. So it's nothing but an equation that is going to relate the angle of the incident light and the angle of the transmitted light at the interface between two different media. Okay, so Snell's law you can apply to all materials in all of the phases of matter. Okay, so many people will be much more familiar with the Snell's law because of the apparent shortening of the legs that is actually observed when standing in the water okay so maybe if you go into the water okay like if you stand there okay normally the legs will be very very small okay so that's based on the incident light and the angle of the transmitted light okay so another common example of refraction of material is diamond okay so we'll have many facets of the cut diamond okay uh, that is actually combined with the high index of refraction which gives the diamonds you know a brilliance what they are known for okay so that is reflection refraction okay so snell's law you can use it for optical devices maybe like fiber optics so snell's law can be stated as the ratio of the sign of the angle of incidence and the angle of transmission okay that is equal to ratio of the refractive index of the materials at the interface okay so refraction is going to occur when you know the speed of the light is going to change when it is going to pass into the new medium okay so speed of the light you can give it as c is equal to n multiplied by v so n is nothing but the refractive index of the material c is equal to n multiplied by v so this n is nothing but the refractive index of the material c as you know it is the velocity of light 3 multiplied by 10 power 8 meter per second okay right so the refractive index you can determine from the permittivity and of course the permeability of the material so it's actually you can know the properties of the material from the electrical properties of the material so that is how you will determine the optical properties okay so using these properties you can actually determine the refraction okay the index of the refraction can be defined as okay so n the refractive index is equal to c by v what is the c velocity of the light okay so it can also be given as square root of epsilon mu divided by epsilon null mu null okay so epsilon by epsilon null epsilon r so that is nothing but the relative permittivity okay mu divided by mu null it is mu r relative permeability okay so here epsilon r relative permittivity mu r relative permeability okay so we'll have the index of refraction for selected materials like vacuum air 
it is 1.000293 water 1.333 this one you know water 1.33 okay so that is a refractive index ice 1.309 plexiglass 1.49 soda lime glass 1.46 diamond 2.42 highest uh, like an index of refraction okay right so snell's law as i told you by the definition it is defined as the um, ratio okay ratio of the sign of the angle of the incidence and the transmission okay to the index of the refraction for each of the material so sin theta 1 divided by sin theta 2 is equal to n2 by n1 okay so we'll have the angles to be measured okay from the normal line at the interface so this is the normal interface okay so p it is incident at the angle of theta 1 and q it is having the transmission okay at the angle of theta 2 okay so this is n1 and this is n2 for n1 there will be velocity v1 and for n2 that is velocity v2 so additionally because the index of the refraction is actually related to the speed of the light in the material so you can say like sin theta 1 by sin theta 2 is equal to v1 by v2 so when the light is going to cross you know the boundary between two different materials light will be refracted either at a greater angle or maybe at the smaller angle depending on the relative refractive index of the each of the material so maybe like if the index of the refraction for the second material is maybe greater than the first material then light will be refracted to the very smaller angle so this is the refraction at the interface between two materials then we'll understand this uh, light as a wave form okay so snell's law actually arises from the wave nature of the light so light you can describe it in several ways like a ray light can be described as a ray okay or maybe a particle like photon okay and maybe like a wave okay all right so the interaction of the light with that particular material can be better described for the light when light is maybe thought of as a wave okay right so you have to understand the behavior of the light at the interface that is how the energy must be conserved okay or maybe preserved so the energy of the light going in the first material must be same as the energy of the light in the second material so the energy of light can be given as e is equal to h okay multiply by f what is it e energy what is this h planck's constant planck planck's constant maybe if you can google planck's constant you will have a value planck constant will be having one value okay f is nothing but frequency okay so f can also be given by v by lambda okay so that is the reason you substitute h f in place of f we give by v by lambda okay right so yeah, as you as i told you f is nothing but the frequency of the wave v is nothing but the velocity or maybe the speed of the wave h the planck's constant c from this c is nothing but the speed of the light in the vacuum so because the energy must be conserved at the boundary the frequency of the light must be remaining the same for all of the materials because that uh, the number of waves arriving at the interface per unit time must be the same as the number of waves leaving the interface at that particular time so the boundary interface cannot create or maybe destroy the waves okay so from this one like uh, uh, the number of waves arriving at the interface okay must be the same as what that is actually leaving so these are the number of wave fronts arriving at the interface must be the same at the number leaving the interface then we'll have velocity change so the speed that the wave is going to propagate is dependent on the medium that the light is actually traveling in so the velocity change is actually due to the interaction between the light and maybe the resonance of the electrons in the materials which may be either tight or maybe loose held on the nuclei in the material okay so we will see that the change in velocity that velocity change that causes the refraction of the light in the new medium so the velocity of the light in the medium can be given as 1 by square root of epsilon mu you know epsilon permittivity mu permeability okay so v is equal to 1 by square root of epsilon mu so this is actually an extension of the snell's law so this is what you call it as total internal reflection t i e r okay total internal reflection and critical angle okay so maybe for several combination of the medium there's an angle 
for which the refracted light will be perpendicular to the normal. Okay. So here you will be having critical angle theta c is equal to sin inverse of n1 by n2. So this actually comes from the equation sin theta c is equal to n1 by n2. So from this only comes that equation. Okay. So what is this theta c? Sin inverse of n1 by n2. So from this equation only it comes. Okay. So that is a critical angle you will define. Okay. With regards to n1 and then n2. Okay. Right. So here if you can see in the diagram. Okay. From the water we will have the incident ray and the refracted ray. For example if you see in the water uh, you maybe uh, put this bottle. Okay. Down in the water. Maybe in the top you will see like this. But bottom you will see like this. Refracted. Uh, you, you got that? So that is actually incident ray, refracted ray. Okay. So this is actually at the angle of theta 1. This is actually at the angle of theta 2. Okay. So we will measure the critical angle sin inverse of n1 by n2. And this is the total internal reflection. Okay. Theta 1, theta 2. Okay. So if the incident angle is actually greater than the critical angle, then the light will be completely reflected back to the original medium. Okay. So the total internal reflection can also occur if there is a significant uh, difference in the refractive index between the two materials. Okay. So this is what you call total internal reflection will have theta 1 plus theta 2. So that gives rise to the fiber optics. Okay. So very important application is fiber optics. So maybe in the telecommunication, okay, maybe like data transmission in high speed servers, you will be using uh, the Snell's law. Okay. So before because that the uh, fibers are not laid out in straight lines, the light must be guided towards the length of the fiber. So these are the schematics and comparison of the fiber optic cable types. So we'll have, you know, three types of fiber, step index fiber, graded index fiber, or maybe single mode fiber. Okay. So we'll have, uh, you know, 380 micrometer, 200 micrometer. That's the index of the refraction. Okay. So this is the step index fiber. It will be reflecting like this okay right refraction occurs like this and output pulse will be having a slow increase and then you'll have greater index fiber 125 micrometer okay so this would be the inner uh, length would be 50 to 100 micrometer okay so here it will be like greater index fiber will be having definite patterns okay so here there will be a spike okay so then for the single mode fiber, it is 125 micrometer same. Okay. Here the thickness would be 10 micrometer. Okay. So for this one, you'll be having, you know, definite line. Okay. So it will be propagating. So you'll try to analyze the step index fiber and of course the graded mode fiber. In the step index fiber, there is actually very large decrease in the index of refraction at the interface between the glass fiber and the cladding. Okay. The inner part. Okay. So that allows the light to move in the zigzag pattern okay in the step step uh, index fiber if you can see zigzag pattern like this okay right so that will have have the zigzag pattern down the length of the fiber and because of this one there will be considerable distortion in the light pulse so because of this distortion that the step index fiber are only used for shorter fiber uh, length even okay then especially for the graded mode fibers, the index of the refraction of the core is going to decrease, okay, with the radius of the fiber as it gets larger, okay. So this you can achieve it by having like additives to the fiber class, okay, like uh, B2O3 or maybe GEO2, okay. So by having the uh, index of the refraction change gradually, the light is gradually bent back towards the center of the fiber. So here the distortion of the light is much smaller than the step index fiber okay so which means that the longer fiber you can be used if the fiber has having the graded index core okay so graded index core fibers generally you can use it for the data transfer for transferring between devices in the case of the lan local area network okay so final we will be having single mode fiber that is the third type okay so single mode fiber you can use it for longer distance network when there is actually very little need for the curve in the fiber. So in the single mode fiber, 
the light travels straight down the axis of the fiber straight if you can see in the diagram straight okay right straight down the axis of the fiber and does not experience a refraction okay then we'll be having reflection as well as transmission coefficient so here waves are actually reflected at the boundaries when there is difference in the impedance of the materials on each side of the boundary okay so the difference you can call it as the impedance mismatch okay so the greater the impedance mismatch the greater will be the percentage of the energy that will be reflected at the surface or maybe the boundary between the medium and the other medium okay right so the fraction of the incident wave intensity that is actually reflected can be derived because the particle velocity and of course local particle pressures must be continuous across the boundary so in the impedance of the materials on both sides of the boundary are known so the fraction of the incident wave intensity that is actually reflected can be calculated from this particular equation okay so this one you can call it as the reflection coefficient okay so if you try to multiply the reflection coefficient by 100 that will be giving you the percentage of the original energy so r can be given as z2 minus z1 divided by z2 plus z1 in the whole square so since the amount of the reflected energy plus the transmission energy must be equal to the total amount of the incident energy the transmission coefficient you can calculate by simply subtracting that reflection coefficient okay from the one okay so that will be one minus okay so that value then we'll uh, understand brewster's angle it's very very important brewster's angle is very very important okay so it can be defined as the angle of the incidence at which there is no reflection angle of incidence for which there is no reflection of the polarized light p polarized light at the uncoated optical surface so when the light impinges on the flat boundary between two different transparent media generally at least some part of the optical power is actually reflected so for the angle of incidence called as the brewster's angle or maybe you can also call it as the polarizing angle that reflection no yoke okay reflection no provided the light is p polarized okay so later condition which means that the polarization condition or maybe polarization direction in which the direction at which the electric field vector is going to oscillate lies within the plane of the incidence okay so there is also a yes polarized light as well that's scatter polarized okay so the reflectivity is even higher than for the light with the normal incidence in the boundary so this is the brewster plate okay so for obtaining this vanishing reflection loss at the brewster plate okay so the angle of incidence has to be close to the brewster angle and the light should be p polarized okay so the polarization direction is in the same direction of the angle of incidence okay so the magnitude of the brewster's angle okay depends on the refractive index of the involved optical media so theta b brewster angle equal to arc tangent of n2 by n1 but in the earlier case we saw sine here we saw tan okay arc tangent of n2 by n1 so we'll understand Brewster's angle as a function of the ratio of the refractive indices. Okay, so here we'll have N1 and N2 being the refractive indices of the medium of the incoming beam and maybe other medium. Okay, and then we can show that the sum of the angles in both the media like a, a incoming beam and maybe other medium, okay, would be equal to 90 degree. Okay, so maybe we'll consider the light coming from the air like N1 equal to 1, we'll assume, okay to the glass with n2 is equal to 1.5 so here we will be ca ca calculating the brewster's angle what is the brewster's angle r tangent of n2 by n1 so here n2 1.5 divided by n1 1 so from that you will be calculating the angle okay 56.3 okay so we will understand the brewster's angle as a function of the ratio of the refractive indices here we will have the or maybe the refractive index of the second medium if maybe the first medium is already known maybe like n1 equal to 1 okay so we'll have the refract refractive index ratio with regards to brewster's angle it will be gradually it will be increasing so with regards to refractive index like 1 1.1 1.2 1.3 maybe up to 2 okay so for 50 55 60 65 degree brewster's angle it will be increasing then we'll understand polarizing angle so that's much similar to the brewster's angle okay 
So for the interfaces between the media with similar refractive indices, Brewster's angle maybe it will be close to 45 degree. Okay. So reflections were are very weak in this situation. For unpolarized incident light at the Brewster's angle, the reflected light is fully yes polarized because there is no reflection for the P polarized light. So that is where you will be having the polarizing angle. Okay. So here if you see yes polarization, P polarization. So here you will be having angle of incidence okay for 0 10 20 up to 90 with refer with reference to the reflectivity in percentage okay so it will be like rs divided by rp then we'll have reflectors so we are already discussed about fresnel region okay so reflectivities at such surfaces can be calculated using fresnel equation so you can for example calculate the effective reflectivity for the laser beam with finite divergence as the weighted average of the reflectivities for different angular components. So maybe like when the reflectivities are actually very small because most laser beams will be having like very smaller divergence. Okay. So for the def better understanding of the reflectivity, you can consider the oscillating electric polarization maybe in the second medium, which is actually perpendicular to the direction of the vanishing reflected beam. Okay. So you know very well that the dipoles actually do not emit uh, uh, radiation exactly in the direction of the oscillation right so that's not the exact explanation we are talking about for example like uh, it's not clear why you know the direction of the electric polarization in the second medium should be re relevant okay although the reflected beam will propagate in the first medium okay so we'll hi have a technical exploitation of the brewster's angle okay we'll consider an example so optical elements in the laser resonators or maybe other optical setups, light setup, okay, are often oriented such that the laser beam propagating through them is maybe at the Brewster's angle, okay. So that is the reason you are going to avoid the reflection losses for the p-polarized light without requiring any anti-reflection coatings. Okay? So the advantage is that not only that such coatings are not actually required, but definitely it can be realistically achieved okay the effective uh, reflectivities are typically lower with that technique okay but several disadvantages also happen for example like uh, there would be not proper alignment or maybe astigmatism of focus beams that will have uh, to need extra components or maybe design details in order to avoid that detrimental effects okay so the examples we saw we see like laser crystals uh, bifringent tuners prism pairs okay so that's how you will go for wavelength tuning or maybe dispersion compensation and maybe like brewster windows in the gas lasers okay. so maybe in the example of prisms okay prism where you pass on the light the technique can of course work at the input and of course output phase only if the angle between the two uh, surfaces is correctly chosen so for example for a prism okay of fused silica maybe silicon dioxide and maybe wavelength like 1064 nanometer where the refractive index may be like 1.486 so the ideal angle between the prism surfaces would be 67.9 degree that can be calculated by the formula okay so when the angle maybe you instead of using this 65 degree okay the reflection losses for the symmetric path through the crystal maybe like approximately it will be 0 0.7 percentage in the total so for 60 degree the loss would definitely already risen to 3.8 percentage for example for glasses like ESM10 okay having the higher refractive index of approximately 1.7 at 1064 nanometer the ideal prism angle would be 60.8 degree and maybe when you are choosing 60 degree definitely the reflection loss would be minimum okay so that's how the incident light transmitted light okay this is for material 1 and material 2 incident angle reflection angle okay so this is the transmitted light and then this is the reflected light